And Ida making landfall on the 16th anniversary of Katrina. That's some coincidence. Kind of makes me a little nervous, Addison. Yeah, same here as well. I mean, it's kind of eerie that we're going to be seeing this similar track go down on the anniversary of Katrina that came through just east of the city of New Orleans. And at one point, it was a major hurricane category five. But before being landfall on Grand Island, it turned to a category three. Now, Ida is forecasted to make its landfall as a category four, but just to the south and west of New Orleans, pretty much on a similar path that we saw a category four back in 1965 go down and that was Hurricane Betsy and uh, we have not seen too many category fours make landfall in Louisiana. But as we were talking about in that video, seeing the storm surge being a big issue down here and of course a lot of southern Louisiana is um, swamps and marshlands and just around the river, river um, the Mississippi River Valley Delta I should say, you're dealing with the potential of seeing a huge storm surge pushing all that water further inland. The white highlighted areas you see right there, those are levee systems around those locations right there. So hopefully they are able to take on the potential big time storm surge that is going to be coming on in as Ida starts to make its approach towards that eventual landfall. You can see the wave heights are going to be running on average about 15 to maybe 30 feet as you go further out and towards the Gulf of Mexico going on right now. And then as we start to see Ida move further inland, we'll start to see that storm surge being less of an issue, but it's pretty much pushed much of the Gulf of Mexico that was pushing up ahead of it forward on land. In fact, we can start to see right now some scattered rain showers as those outer bands are starting to graze the northern sections of the Gulf Coast right there. A little bit some rainfall is coming on down near Panama City and up in towards the New Orleans area. They're just seeing partly to mostly cloudy skies and breezy conditions. Ida is packing winds of 105 miles per hour sustained gusts are higher than that. And it's moving to the northwesterly direction at 16 miles per hour. There are, of course, numerous warnings out there all across the parishes of Louisiana and counties of Mississippi. Mississippi. And as we look forward towards that eventual landfall coming on in, it may be doing so as that category four status of winds in excess of 130 plus miles per hour. But once it moves further inland, it is forecast to weaken down toward category two as it's moving just over the city right there of Huma and then heading in towards the Baton Rouge area, the capital of Louisiana. When can we expect those winds to move on in? Well, Look right here towards your hurricane wind categories. Light blue highlighted area, that's tropical storm force winds, 39 plus miles per hour. Up and towards the New Orleans area, you can maybe see that by tomorrow morning around 7.30 in the morning. Then we start to get those higher categories starting to pop on up, category two, category three, as you head on in towards Sunday afternoon as that landfall comes through. Rain, rain amounts and the flooding potential will be a big concern for Sunday and into Monday as well as we start to see that system push further inland and then eventually raining itself out as it weakens down towards our remnant low. But unfortunately, that won't be for several days. And a lot of these areas like Tennessee and up and towards Kentucky definitely did see their fair share of heavy rain come down for the past several weeks. So it's going to be a big concern out there, Sherman, and we're going to be keeping our eyes on Ida as it eventually makes that eventual landfall. Yeah, it's uh, not over by a long shot once it hits land. All right, mm -hmm. thank you.